Hello everybody and welcome to my first episode of the X3 Albion Prelude uh, series. So I'm, I've been kind of sitting here deciding on how to start this series and you know what, what do you do with a game that is essentially a sandbox. So the first part of this video is going to be me talking a lot. So I thought I would at least have a little bit of a cool little background scene going there. So what's going on is that there is a war going on in this game. And above me, we have an allied fleet with a capital ship right there. You can kind of see uh, right there. It is heading to defend this trading station, which is getting just pummeled to death. I have it targeted. You can see it only has 20% hit points left. And the all the red around there... Oops, let me... That's the wrong way. That is uh, a Terran battle fleet. And I'll get to uh, why they're there here in a bit. So, uh, starting off, I, I want to say that I don't really consider myself a expert on uh, X3 Albion Prelude. I have put in a couple hundred hours into the game, but it's so deep that I still wouldn't really consider myself a... Look at that, that asteroid just blew up. Um, an expert. So... Uh, I'm going to tell you at least things that I know about the game. I'm sure there's going to be things that I, you know, don't mention that other people may know. Uh, feel free to give me advice or feedback um, whenever you feel like it, because I'm always up for that. So, some things I want to cover here. First, I am using a overhaul mod uh, known as the Rebalance mod, and this Rebalance mod, which I'll put a link to the to the uh, in the description below, changes a lot of things, which kind of makes me even more of a noob. And I just saw some bright flash of light it looks like a um, another battle group is just teleport not teleported but jumped into the system to help uh help that trading station but anyway sorry i got i got sidetracked um so yes this mod let me go over some of some of the changes i'm not going to go over it all if you want to know just click on the link and check it out so <laughs> This game is pretty massive. It has a lot of uh, sectors, but this mod adds 50 new sectors to the game, which is insane. It also does a lot of uh, ship rebalancing. I guess they went into it and reworked every single ship, modified what weapons they can have. And according to their description, their mod description, it says that they, they don't want a I win, quote unquote, ship. And so far, I've only played this mod a little bit, um, but it, it, it seems to work. Uh, another thing that they changed, or added, I should say, is, holy shit, um, <laughs> is that there are 200 new ships added to this game with this rebalance mod, this overhaul mod. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, there's also, oh, this is really cool too. So they have racialized the weapons. So in the base game, you can use any weapon on any ship, but now each race has its own set of weapons that it can use so you can't just use you know like a um like a boron weapon system in a split vessel or vice versa and i'll get to the factions here in a bit so you understand what that means uh so yeah i'm kind of going over this as if you know for like for new players if you are a veteran of the x series a lot of this information is probably going to be um you know stuff you already know but i would figure you know i, I should kind of do a little explanation for those of us those of you who don't know so anyway uh, racialized weapons, that's pretty awesome. Also, ammo weapons have been changed into standard energy weapons, and they say that their damage has been reconfigured for that change. Um, I'm assuming they did this because ammo weapons, I don't think, are really a favorite with the players because of the out-of-sight combat in this game. And out-of-sight combat, uh, if you don't know, is something I'll, I'll kind of explain that whenever we get around to that, but um, I'm not going to go too deep into the, what that means right now. But for those of you who know what ammo weapons is, and what out of sight combat is, I'm, I'm assuming that's why they changed ammo weapons into standard energy. Um, aggressive enemies. Oh my god, I've spent a couple hours with this mod so far, and aggressive enemies is right. Like, I have seen uh, Xenon forces all over the place. There are now border skirmishes between races that I guess that hate each other, you know, in the lore. There are now a lot of like border fleets that are sent Missile against each other. Crazy. Holy shit, I'm actually in the battle now. Um, I was trying to Missile stay closing. far enough away to not actually get pulled in. Hold on, everybody. Let me uh, go towards this jump gate. I was not expecting the battle to uh, to hit me that quickly. All right, so let me pull away a little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> Ha 
That was surprising. I have no idea what missile that was, but holy shit. I was flying a centaur with full shields, and that was that was kind of surprising. Um, we'll keep this going. It's fine. I'll just restart from um, where I had saved it last. So, um, <laughs> damn, I guess I got too close. I wanted to have a pretty light show for everybody to see. Uh, I guess I should also cover this real quick since we're on the screen right now. So you can see the X3 rebalance mod is there showing you that it, it is enabled. So let's click a new game. And, uh, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but I, I think this is a good chance to go through this. So what this mod also adds is a lot of different starting people. So you have this Archon, uh, Arcanist, um, I'm not sure if that is new or not, but uh, let's see, what else is there? Yeah, uh, the Cunning Charlatan, um, you have this dude, hunt, Hunted Hero. And so if you don't know, um, anything about this game, what these different people kind of change in the game at least from what i can tell is only your starting equipment and your starting uh, like racial factions um relationships to you know if, if a faction likes you or not there's besides that there doesn't seem to be that much of a huge difference other than just your starting equipment and uh like i said the um faction relations but anyway so it adds a ton of new starting people uh if that is something you're interested in i see a pony the hero of soul that i've never even actually, actually saw that before but anyway so just real quick the mod has a lot of those at least i believe it's from the mod i hope it is because it's the only thing i've downloaded all right so we're going to hit continue go back to my save file here so anyway uh so yeah i was on more aggressive enemies so also what that encompasses is that pirates are a lot more aggressive in this mod. I see pirates everywhere. So if you are a person who enjoys doing, you know, sector trading and universal trading, you know, you, you set up your own little trading fleets, be careful if you use this mod because they will be destroyed by random pirates that just are all over the place. Uh, let me see if I can get back to that fight because um, there's still some more talking to be done. Right now I'm in a trading vessel. Let me get back to my... Um, my centaur. Where is that? The outpost here. Shoot. Hold on. There we go. Docking granted. Autopilot activated. Okay. So yeah, pirates are, are all over the place. So you have to be kind of be careful about that. Another thing that changed, and something that I actually tested out, is the bartering system has been overhauled. And oh my goodness the bartering system is an easy way to make money. I am currently sitting at uh, 121 million, and that's after I've bought this Minstrel Super Freighter, or Mercury Super Freighter, I'm sorry, and a Centaur. The bartering system, you can make so much money really fast, it's insane. Uh, but So that's been overhauled for anybody interested in like the trading part of this game. Also, what we witnessed when before I got destroyed there is part of the new campaign. So the campaign, like, war is just blown up between the Terrans and the Argons. And what this campaign does is, I think the best way to describe it would be to compare it kind of to done. League of Legends oh, or Dota. Only in the sense is that, um, only in the sense that the AI gets, um... Uh, fleets spawned that are just sent to the front line. Uh, let me change a ship here. And that happens, uh, I'm not sure what the intervals are, but um, I've kind of kept my eye out on the front line, and it seems to happen a lot. Like, when a fleet is destroyed, there's almost always another fleet coming right behind it. So it's just this nonstop wave after wave of Argons fighting Terrans, and all the fighting is typically in these three sectors. So this... I believe is, yeah, that's Argon space. You can see the race right there. That's Argon, Argon. Okay, and this is Terran. So, Terrans come from our solar system, Earth, Mars, and all that stuff. And the only way, or actually, I think there's two ways, but this is the main way to get to Terran space is through this sector right here called Heretic's End. And there are just wave after wave of fleets that just spawn, and they all meet up generally in these three uh, sectors. So what you were seeing was the AI of the Argon you know, going up against the Terran fleet. And actually, let's get back there so I can show you some more of that. I'm going to do my jump drive here, which I have installed. And we're going to jump back to 
Circle of Labor. I'm going to choose the South Gate because I think the Terrans are at the North Gate. Charging at 10%. 20. And I'm going to finish uh, talking. So yeah, that's a, that's a huge change for the story. And from what I can tell, it seems pretty balanced. I haven't... Entering system, oh, oh Jesus. Those guys are, are really close. Those guys are really close. Um... Argon. All right, you know what? Cerberus. We're going to try and help this Argon freighter real quick. So... <laughs> we're going to just let our tourists do a lot of the work here. Actually, I need to go into first person... Or uh, this mode. Where the hell... Uh, not that. What the heck is going on? There we go. All right, so you kind of see my turrets are automatically firing. I do have control over some of our of my forward-facing um, weapons, and we're gonna just do a little combat real quick because combat is here, and then I'll get back to talking. So this ship has, I believe, 22 turrets, and it is an excellent fighter. Or like it's like a gunship. You you may you have this ship out for destroying fighters. Oh my goodness. I have no idea what just blew up, but my shields just dropped down to 50%. I'm trying to destroy this uh, Terran Katana in front of me. And I'm, I'm assuming my other turrets are shooting at other targets. Alright, we should be able to destroy this Katana. Its hull is almost gone. On behalf of our president and senator, All right. the Argon Federation, thank you for your help with this invader. Where is the gate? Where is the gate? You get 5,000 credits. Okay, we are going to go through the gate and... Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Because I need to talk more and I can't talk when there is combat going on around me. Alright, so real quick. There is a bounty system that has been added to this game as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure it comes from the rebalance mod. You'll notice that the thing I have targeted in the this bottom middle, the Terran Escort Katana, it has a money symbol next to it. So that tells me that if I destroy that Terran Katana, I am going to get paid for it. So if you want to make money just by fighting, um, you can come to these war sectors. I'm just trying to do like some evasive maneuvers here. Target Ooh. left firing range. So you can come to the Entry war zone, system. and you can make, if, if you're the last person to hit that ship and blow it up, you can make so much money just by continually fighting, which is kind of what I want to show off, but just not yet, because I'm not done with the introduction. I was not expecting to see that um, Terran fleet right there. I thought they were going to be further into the sector. So I think what you see up, in, Arga, up here Argon, is um, probably another one of those Argon AI waves that have spawned and heading to the, uh, to the front. Okay. So I would like to show off that combat, but uh, we'll, we'll jump back through here in a little bit after I'm done a little more talking. Okay, so, whew, new campaign. Um, so as far as I can tell, it's going to take the player to actively participate in the war for it to, uh, you know, either if you're on the Argon side for the Argons to win, if you're on the Terran side for the Terrans to win. The AI fleets don't really seem, or they seem well balanced to the point where they, they can't win the war by themselves as far as I can tell so far. So that's pretty cool. That's a new campaign. And if you want to make money and you want to fight a lot, just constantly just stay in the in the front lines, which I showed you of those three sectors, and you know try to make sure you hit the last uh, shot on an enemy and you can just make so much money uh, very fast. So new campaign. Um, speaking of ways to make money, there's the bartering system, which I'll probably show in another video because it's, it's a little in depth uh, to just kind of jump into if you've never seen it before. Um, so the bartering system is a really good way. The uh, you can set up sector traders and universal traders, which um, I should I should mention this too. If you have not played the rebalance mod, the rebalance mod also changes the economy. And for example, the trading software MK3, which if you don't know, that's the software you need to install on a ship for it to become um, kind of like self-sufficient, that it can trade on its own and make you the most money. So that software has been increased to, I think it's 3.5 million. And like the base cost in the base game, gosh, I can't even remember offhand to be honest. I think it was just a couple hundred thousand. So like that change is, is insane. Jump drives uh, have also been increased to 1.5 or 2.5 million to install. And I forgot to mention this, I, I apologize. Most fighters can no longer equip jump drives in this version with this rebalance mod because it has now been changed to a extra large cargo type. So most fighters cannot um, carry an extra large cargo type. So now 
you know, if you want your fighters to move around, you're typically going to have to kind of get some some sort of carrier and uh, use your carrier to jump drive uh, fighters around. So like all these new changes, I'm still getting used to the mod, so I'm sure we'll find and discover even new things that are changes in the future. All right, um, I have a little checklist here. I'm looking at it right now. So next is uh, ship classes. Uh, do I do I go back in here? There's still a lot of talking to, for me to do, so I, I just want to show that like some action in the background. Let's check back through here. And after this introduction video, I'm not going to spend much time explaining. Uh, maybe when we come up across new things, I'll explain it a little bit. But this first video is going to be a lot of talking, a lot of explaining, just to kind of introduce Entering new players system, to this uh, to this game. All right, so it looks like that little Terran battle fleet has been taken out. That's cool. And. In the distance, you can see some energy weapons going off. That's the fleet that destroyed me in, in the beginning, or uh, you know, a couple minutes ago. So I'm going to stay probably back here. You can still kind of watch some of the fighting going on. You have some reinforcements coming in. All right. So, whew, in the X series, there are many different classes of ships. So I'm going to go over with these classes in this video, and that's the only time I'm going to do it. Um, if I mention a class in a future video and you don't know what it is, I was just looking up on Wikipedia or something like that, because I'm not going to constantly go over what these classes are. But for this first video, I will. Starting from the smallest combat vessel, this is part of the fighter group. You have an M5, which M5 is basically your scouts. They're very fast, not that suitable for combat. That sounded like something targeted me, but there's nothing around me, so I guess I'll ignore that. Uh, so yeah, M5 for scouts. M4 and M4 Plus are basically interceptors. Uh, M3s are kind of a heavier duty fighter. They're slower than interceptors, typically uh, better armed and better shielded. So those are your fighters. The escort class of ships, you have an M8, which is a bomber. Uh, typically, I think it's generally about the same size as like an M3, but it has a huge cargo bay so that it can hold a lot of missiles and is considered a bomber ship. And bombers cannot dock, as far as I know, in most carrier class ships. What can dock in carrier class ships are M5s, M4s, and M3s. Then, in the escort class, you also have an M6, which is a Corvette class of ship, which is... Um, I believe that's what I'm piloting here, this, this Centaur. It's a ship that's ideal for leading like fighter squadrons against other fighter squadrons and very small ships like other M6 Corvettes. Uh, most of my armaments are all geared for anti-fighter uh, combat. So that's what I'm flying. It's about, I don't know, they, they vary in size, but this is a example of a M6 Corvette. You can see all the turrets. Like I said, it has like 22. It just destroys fighter groups it's insane but against bigger ships it it will it will fail speaking of bigger ships now we're into the capital class starting from the smallest you have the m7 which is a uh, a frigate class and actually some m7s also can be carriers depending on which race you're buying the m7 from um there's also m7m which is a missile frigate M7C, which are light carriers, there's so many classes, um, and that takes care of like the frigate group. Then one step bigger is an M2. I know it's kind of weird, it, it goes from an M7 to an M2, but that's how they made it. M2s are destroyers. Uh, those are the ships that you're going to want to have around to destroy other, uh, other capital ships, so those guys are heavy duty. Then you have M1s, which are carriers. Typically... I think as a rule of thumb, an M1 is going to lose to an M2, depending on the fighters you have in the carrier though, but one-on-one, -on -one, a carrier should not stand up to a destroyer. And that is a general generalization of the class of ships in this game that I'll probably make reference to, like, oh look, this is an M1 ship, this is an M2. So I just wanted to cover that in the beginning of this series right here. There are also transport types, very quickly. TL transports are huge flipping ships. They're like the size of a destroyer or a carrier, and those transports are made to transport stations around and build stations for you. Uh, we'll get into building stations later in the series. I do plan on building a few, so we'll get to there when 
well, sometime in the future. Uh, you have military transports, which have a lower cargo capacity, but they typically have four fighter slots, so they're like a very light carrier. Um, yeah, that's basically what they are. They're like a very light carrier, but very cheap. Uh, you have a TS, which a TS is your basic cargo uh, vessel, and then you have a TP, which is a personnel transport. Whew. So those are all the different classes um, in X3, at least that I know of. There is also an M0, but there are actual no M0 ships in this game, as far as I know, unless this mod actually added an M0, which are basically carriers and destroyers put together in a massive ship that is capable of destroying planets, at least according to the lore. Whew. All right, so that's all the class of ships. Now, my... My goal in this series, since this is a sandbox game, is um, to just build up a bunch of stations, build up um, relations with the different factions so that I have access to buy their ships, because that's basically the whole point of increasing your relations with a faction. And let me actually show you that screen. I'll go down to my pilot status. Okay, so these are the different factions that you can increase your uh, relations with. We have the Argon Federation, which I am almost at max width because I started as a Argon Peacekeeper which is just one of the starting packages so I'm maxed with the Argon Federation so I can I have access to every single one of their ships their capital ships I can buy escort fighters transports whatever um, we have the Borons which I typically ignore I don't like the look of their ships um, but I am an accepted friend because of my starting package which again was the Argon Peacekeeper I am a Split Family Protector, so Split is another faction. I'm probably going to be focusing on trying to get Split ships, uh, meaning I still need to increase my relations with them. I am 48% to the next ranking, and I honestly can't tell you... I don't, I don't have these memorized. Like a Family Protector, I have no idea what that unlocks access to, but I know that I can't buy their capital ships yet. I need to be higher, um, but I typically just kind of refer to Wikipedia to see where I'm actually... Where my relations actually is for the split like family protector means nothing to me um but if i check wikipedia i can see how many levels down that is from like the max uh split faction ranking and then that'll tell me how close i am to unlocking their better ships and it really looks like in the background we are definitely losing this fight and i probably should pull out of here soon uh, but anyway next you have the parent is which i don't honestly know much about i never really played around with the parent is there is the talati um which you'll probably see a lot of in this playthrough, the Goner, and then the Terran, which we are currently at war with, so you're probably not going to see me have any Terran ships. Oh, okay, so <laughs> that's a brief look or a brief uh, explanation on the different factions, and the whole purpose of increasing your rating with these factions is to unlock their uh, ships, and I'm going to get the hell out of here. I think the battle is heading to me. Um, where is the... There you are. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Let's let's get this out of here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we're getting the hell out of here. Whew. Okay. So yeah, the entire purpose of increasing your raking with um, a faction is to gain access to its uh, bigger and better ships. So I'm going to be focusing primarily on trying to increase my relationship with the split. And there are a couple ways you can do that. Uh, trading within their system seems to increase the rating. I've never... Well, in a previous game, I did sector traders, which are those uh, traders that kind of trade on their own. You don't really have to give them much orders. And just through trading, I was able to increase my rating. So trading increases your rating with a, a faction. You can also pick up missions in that faction space. So for example, if you see a... In this instance, it's a light bulb over this station. That means you can click Argon on the station. Oh, you don't want to uh, do that. Uh, you can go to comms, and you'll see that you can actually talk to people on that station. And this guy actually has a mission for me. Uh, there are multiple icons. This is a light bulb. There's um, like a crosshairs. That means it's a mission that's going to involve combat. There's a lot of different missions out there. And just flying through space, you'll come across many. So, um... If you take the mission and you complete it, that will also help increase your ranking with um, the faction whose space that station belongs to. So in this case, we're in Argon, so that would increase my Argon. I am going to do a jump drive into Split Space. Um, this is... Oh, I sh you know what? I should probably go over the map screen. 
So this is the galaxy map. This is the galaxy that I have discovered so far in this playthrough. Now I know, because I've played this game before, um, what part of these, you know, like this is Argon Space, uh, this is Boron, this little section of the galaxy is uh, Talati, this section is Split, um, then it goes back to Talati, then Argon, and then north of here is, is the Terran. But the, the map is so much larger than this. It only shows you the things that you've discovered. So I'm going to go to Tharox Ravine, which is a split sector. Jump device charging. I'm going to use my jump drive. 10%. 20. I'm going to hit uh, 40. the SETA 50. drive, which I guess I can explain what that is. So SETA is something that you actually install on your ships. And it allows you to increase time by up to a thousand percent. And Star trust me, ravine. you're gonna want that. You definitely are gonna want that. So my goal right now is I know that this is a split um, border sector, and I know that the sector south of this is considered pirate space. So I'm going to go on patrol and look for pirates to kill. And if I kill pirates or any other enemy races inside the split sector, then I will increase my relations that way as well. Um, what other ways are there? I think I think that basically covers it. If you destroy enemies of the split in their in their space, trade with them, um, and accept missions in their space as well. Okay, so let's also talk about the map screen because this is something I talked about in my X Rebirth rant video. So this is the sector map screen in X uh, in X three. On the right, <clears throat> sorry, my voice broke. On the right here, you can um, decide if you only want to see the ships within your radar. You can see if you want to do ships or stations or all. And then from here, I can talk to the privateer trading post. And if I wanted to go there, I can just auto dock and my autopilot will kick in and take me there. So this is the map. It tells you everything that you need to know. Um, I, I think it's it's pretty easy to read. Although the thing the thing that does take some time is. Like the icons next to these ship names, this tells you what kind of ship class that is. So I know that that little triangle means it's an M5, uh, which is a scout. I know that this icon next to these uh, ships means it's a transport. Um, and then that's a civilian ship. Actually, I don't even recognize that icon. That's odd. I don't, I don't remember that icon at all. Um, but so that that is something that does take getting used to. Being able to open up the map and just looking at uh, these icons and... So you kind of know what kind of class ship that is and if you can, you know, take it or not. All right. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So we have a pirate buster. This shows me that I believe that is a M4, which is a interceptor class uh, ship. That's another interceptor class ship, pirate elite. And from this screen, I can double click anywhere and my autopilot would just kind of take me there. So right now my ship is heading to right there. Let's see, we also have a Harrier, which that tells me that's an M5. And I know that my ship, this Centaur, which I've actually renamed because you can do that. You can go into um, Advanced Options and Rename. And you can rename every single ship, station, or whatever in the game that you want to. Uh, I, and I guess just to let you know because there probably would be questions. UDSF is the United Demarian Space Force. It is... A thing that I've created in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and I use it in X3. So that's what UDSF stands for. Sorry, we're going to close the map, and we're going to destroy these pirates and increase Pirate our ranking Harrier. with the uh, split because I want to gain access to their better ships. So um, right there, that tells me how far away the ships are, and I know that my effective range is about 2.5 kilometers. We're going to get in here. I have control over my four forward-facing weapons, which you can see. and Okay, and then there go my turrets. So we're going to fire here because that's how I would actually hit it. And you can just see how fast I destroy these ships because that's what this class of ship is geared for. It is geared to be a fighter destroyer. It has so many weapons to do the job. Okay. Now that is a new icon. The triangle with the two little dashes under it tells me that that's an M3. So that's one of the heaviest fighters in the game. But still no match for a um, M6, which is what I'm piloting. So we're going to continue our way over here. And you heard that um, voice when I destroyed the vessel saying, you know, they, they thank you for defeating this invader or whatever you said. I can't remember. They have a couple different messages. That's telling you that you are ranking up your relationship with that faction. So I'm going to continue traveling this way. 
and we're going to destroy this other fighter group, which is a M3, and then two M4s. So we have a, a heavy fighter, and then two interceptors. Again, no chance against my Centaur. They're just going to be totally destroyed. So now they are... I think that means they've targeted you. That's what that noise means. And then... We're almost in range. Let me try to do it Target from this view, so you kind of see the, the turrets fire. I'll just let the turrets do their own thing. You can also pilot from this view too. Alright, nope, whoops, they fired a missile at me, no problem. The missiles that these things have typically aren't enough to destroy my ship. I go back to the first person. Lost profits. <laughs> and that was the pirate dying. Cargo bay now contains disruptor missile. So when a ship is destroyed, it sometimes um, some of its cargo is put into space, and you can just kind of fly over it to collect it. So I just collected a missile that was apparently in one of their cargo bays. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some combat. And again, the point of that was to increase my ranking. There's no other pirates. I'm going to open up my map and I want to come I want to go about right there because sitting right here my radar can show me the north gate and the south gate which is typically the only way that pirates come come into a sector is through the gates so I'm gonna sit in the middle here and um, I'm basically kinda of like on patrol uh, so yeah that's a kind of a first look at this game it's just it, it's kinda of really hard to um, I don't know, it, it's a different kind of series for me. You know, this is just a sandbox game. There's just so much you can do. There's so much information out there that I need to share with everybody. Uh, at least everybody that doesn't know, you know, how X3 runs already. Uh, anything else I wanted to cover? I guess some kind of just general, more general information. Later in the game, when you have a large empire of, you know, space stations, you have fleets out there. You're, like, this map screen is going to be your best friend, and also, if you press R, that takes you to your property, which this is all the property that I currently own. Um, oh, I forgot I had a Scorpion Raider. I forgot about that. So, um, here you can see what stations you have. Ships, wings are if you put, um, you know, ships into a wing, so you can just give the wing an order, and all the ships in that wing will follow your order. Uh, these are the sectors that I have property in. Personnel, if I had any, meaning um, like kind of like military people or uh, marines, I should say. And marines are used for boarding actions, which I'll try to show some later in this play. Uh, let's play. Probably far later, though. That's kind of down the line stuff. So yeah, this screen is going to be your best friend, and then the map screen is going to be your best friend. Um, and you probably see those two screens a lot later in this let's play. And yeah, so just my goal is just to build fleets and eventually destroy the Terrans, I guess. Um, you know, your goal is whatever you want it to be. If you want to become a trading empire, you can do that. If you want to become a pirate, you can do that. Um, but for me, I enjoy building space stations. I enjoy building up fleets and I enjoy combat. So that's what is probably mostly going to be focused on. Whew. And I think that's going to do it for this first episode. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, because I, I know I meant to, but I think I did. Maybe not. But uh, this is not going to be an everyday series like my other series typically are. Apologies if I already mentioned that. I'm sorry. I've, there's been a lot of things I've talked about in this episode. Um, but yeah, so don't expect this to be everyday like any of my other series. Because there's a lot of stuff in X that is probably going to be boring to watch. But is very needed and still fun to play. But like I said, it's going to be boring to watch as I kind of go around and... Um, use the bartering system to gain more money. But what I will show, I, actually I will show the bartering system. I will dedicate an episode to kind of show you how that works with this rebalance mod. Um, it's a very easy way to make money if, if you know, if that's, if you want to do that. I'm also eventually going to show station building. I'm going to show how to set up sector traders slash universal traders, um, all kinds of stuff. But uh, yeah, again, don't expect an episode from me every day. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I know it was mostly a lot of talking, and it may have been a little here and there, but again, this, this series is kind of new for me as far as commentating. It's not like a linear line. There's no real story to follow. It's just a sandbox, and there's just so many things to do 
that it, you know, I kind of found it hard to, um, found it hard to, you know, decide what to talk about. But, uh, anyway, give me any feedback or suggestions you have in the comments, um, about what you would like to see in this series. And I'll see if I can do that. And I will see you all next time, um, which I, when I'll probably talk about the bartering system or we'll do more combat. I don't know. Whatever, you know, wherever the, the stars take us. So thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Take care.